liberal group got a hold of it or a conservative group got a hold of it. One of the students recorded it and then it just, now he has to, like, I don't know, he might lose his job. It's just whatever. Can't say anything these days, but. All right, um, another example of this. I wasn't going to be political, but I didn't want people to take it the wrong way. And I'm recording myself. I'm kind of like <laughs> setting myself up for failure here. That's one of my big fears that one day this whole idea of trying to make this a better thing for students is going to backfire on me. All right, uh, this one. Yeah, let's look at this one. What about integral 0 to 2 of 1 over the square root? of 2 minus x dx. This is really, really you know, a similar problem to what we just did. It is not a type 1, right? It's pretty easy to see it's not type 1. The only way you're going to see it's type 2 is if you investigate the interval first and make sure that when you're looking at your interval, that there aren't any discontinuities in that interval. And there are, aren't there? Zero, the denominator will be zero if x is two, which is one of the endpoints of our, our interval. So two is a bad place. And so I'm going to need to approach it from the left side. Agreed? All right, take about two minutes, maybe three minutes, to go ahead and get me the antiderivative of this real quick. Go ahead. See if you can get that antiderivative in two and a half minutes, starting five seconds ago. Sign-in sheet's coming around. Anybody have it yet? OK, so who's volunteering this one? Go ahead. All right, what do you got? Um, negative 2 over 2 minus x. Over 2 minus x? Uh, square root 2 minus x. 2 over it? I agree that there is a root. There you go. OK. All right. Let's see how many agree. Hmm. It's like half. Anyone have something else for me to 
put up here? Go ahead, Ron. Um, um, no? Then you're okay with this? So you have the same thing? Okay. So no one, in it, no one is disagreeing then? It's correct then? If we don't disagree, it's correct? It's right. Bring out the one half. This is a one half. Bring out the one half. Half of that is negative one. Subtract one from this, you get negative one half. That's what drops it down. And then derivative of what's inside is negative one, and that kills off the negative one that's out there. It's, this is correct. Basic u substitution. All right. Both integrals I've asked you all to do today are what I would consider to be not even, probably not even ever going to be something you would see on a test. Those are way too easy. I mean, those are too basic. So if those are, if you're struggling with those, that's, you know, alarm bells should be going off in your head because that, that would be not expected on a test. Um, all right, with that nice, you know, thought, let's just move on. Uh, limit, I just want to be honest with you. I don't want you to think that I'm giving you those as like examples of test problems. I'm just, that should be pretty easy. It should only take you a few minutes at the most. Um, all right, so I'm going to set up a limit. I'm going to let uh, what approach what and from what side? T approach two from the left of the, oh, we already did the antiderivative. So this thing, negative two root two minus x evaluation bar zero to t, right? Replacing the two with t. Now you could get an integral like that in a problem like this, yes. But just not by itself, like integrate that. I feel bad that I told you like that was too easy. But. So I'm going to set up my brackets now, my two sets of parentheses. Plug t in, I get negative 2 times root 2 minus t. And then I plug in 0. What happens when I plug in 0? Negative 2 times root 2? OK. And now we let t go to 0. I'm not t go to 0, t go to 2. So I'm approaching, I'm approaching 2, right, right in here. 2 minus 2 is 0. Now, why is it important that I was approaching from the left side? Let me try and explain that, why it's so important here. Here's 2. I'm approaching from this side, right? So the numbers that I'm actually plugging in for t are smaller than, t, than 2, aren't they? Numbers like 1.9999, very, very, very close to 2 without actually being greater than 2. And so if I take 2 and I subtract 1.9999, I'm going to get a very, very tiny positive number. And that's good because I need to take the square root of it. So it's defined. If I were to be approaching 2 from the other side, then those numbers would be big, uh, bigger than 2, right? 2 minus something bigger than 2 would be a very, very small what? Negative number. And you can't take square root of a negative number. So just purely by domain issues, we have to approach 2 from the left side. So if you were to say, oh, I forgot that I had to come in from one side, just ah, it's not that big of a deal, then you can't tell me that that's going to be equal to 0. Because from one side it is, and from the other side it's not even defined. All right. But it is approaching 0, isn't it? Yep. Which means this whole thing's gone. Which means my answer is what? But then negative, so 2 root 2. So this, this integral converges. Now, you don't have to write converges. If you're giving me a numerical answer, you're kind of implied, and, hey, implying that, hey, that does go to a number. But if it diverges, you need to write down diverges. Questions? Oh, I 
like this one. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. What? No. No. And sometimes I see the problems up there and I'm like, hey man, that's I like that problem. Who came up with that? Oh, I came up with that problem. <laughs> now most of these problems are usually examples out of the book. Just to keep it kind of in line with, with the author. So let's let me pick your brain here. Like what are you thinking here? You see this? What's your thought process? I want to know like what are you thinking first, then then next? Like anyone? Anything. Factor, I'm hearing factoring. People are saying factor. Is everyone thinking factor? All right. Well, I don't mind factoring it. Not sure why you want me to, but I'll do it. Do you want me to factor an X out like that? Okay. Now what are you thinking? Partial fraction. So you're already starting to think about antiderivatives, and you're thinking that's going to be a partial fraction problem. You all see that? Okay. I, I don't mind us going and doing that. We can do the partial fractions. Um, are there any issues that we have with this integral? Is, it a, is this just a normal integral or is this a, a, an improper integral? Yeah, we got to see where it could be zero and see if we're integrating on that. So we are integrating from one to four, aren't we? And do we have an issue somewhere in there? Only at four, right? There's an issue at zero. Is zero in here? No. Zero is not in here. I'm looking between here and here, right? I'm focusing all my attention in there. So I have an issue at four, but not at zero. So I do have an issue here, which means I'm going to need to approach four from the left-hand side, right? So this will turn into a limit, but I will also need to get the antiderivative. So I think this is where you would go do that now, right? Anybody have that yet? That is not an example of a rational um, partial fraction problem on a test either. This one is too easy also. It just, it's just a factorable quadratic. It breaks up into two natural logs. And you pr I have to do a little more work than that on the test. So shall we break this up? I'm going to I'm going to work fast. I'm sorry. You can give this kind of a problem in such a question. Oh yeah, in this in this context, this would be appropriate. But as an integral by itself, this would. If I'm going to be testing you on partial fractions, I'm guessing you're probably going to have to do some long division. You're probably going to have to show me several of the techniques that are required for it. You know. Yeah, I'm, I'm more focused on a problem like this. Do you, are you picking up on this thing? And are you going to address it with the limit or not? Because if you don't bring the limit in, then there's a big problem with it. All right, so I'm going to do this quick. Um, I'm going to rewrite this as A over X. We have two distinct linear factors, right? And that gives me 1 equals A times X minus 4 plus BX. And then when I start plugging in to kill things off, I get A is negative 1 fourth, and I get B is 1 fourth. Anyone agree? Yeah. OK. So that's what you should get if you do your partial fractions correctly. Now back to this. This integral becomes a limit. As what approaches what and from which side? T approaches 4 from the left of the antiderivative, right? What's the antiderivative? 1 fourth natural log of x. Good. Uh, negative 1 fourth, right? Negative 1 fourth natural log of x, absolute value. And then from the B, we have a 1 fourth over that one. So 1 fourth natural log of x minus 4. 
And then we want to evaluate that, right? From where? One to T. Is everyone okay on where that all came from? Like I'm skipping quite a bit of work here just to save time. You feel like you could get that on your own? Yes. Yeah. Well, as soon as you write the next line, you should have a limit. If you're going to not write, you know, if you're going to rewrite it, as soon as you need to, I don't know, you could do it later as long as you do it at some point, you know? But just like as soon as you can would be like the fastest, like the most clear you can. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right, let's plug in the two things. Limit t goes to infinity, or no, infinity. t goes to four from the left. And then I have my two sets of parentheses. This might get kind of tight here. Let's see. Plug in t first. Negative 1 fourth natural log t. Definitely going to be tight here. I'm going to have to erase some stuff. Plus 1 fourth natural log of t minus 4. That's what I get when I plug in t, what happens when I plug in 1? So minus, I'm going to have to carry this one down here. I'm out of room. So plug in 1, it's natural log of 1, 0. So that's all gone. 1 here, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Absolute value, natural log of negative 3. But there's a, net, there's a one fourth in front of it. So shouldn't this just become one fourth natural log of three? Well, you don't need the absolute value. I don't need the absolute value. But it's not wrong to put it either. The absolute value of three is three. All right. Now, t is going to go where? To four, right? From the left. What's natural log of 4? I don't know, something, right? Natural log of 4, whatever that is. But when I try and plug 4 in here, what do I get? You get natural log of 0. And what did we say happens to the natural log function as you approach 0? It becomes infinite, negative infinity, right? And so I can say what then? This diverges. All right, this next example is the last one I'll do today. Integral 3 to 5, x over cube root of x minus 4 dx. Okay, I'd like everyone to uh, work on the antiderivative of that right now. Take, take a few minutes to find the antiderivative of this because you're going to need it. And then we'll talk about whether or not we have a problem, if it's an improper integral, and how we're going to deal with it. But you're going to have to be able to integrate before you can do any of that. So, And then I'll ask for a volunteer to share with me what the antiderivative is and how they got it.
Did you get it wrong? What did you use? So you did integration by parts? Yeah. Is that what you did? Okay. Hmm. Okay, I think that's probably enough time. If you're hung up on it, that's okay. But um, how many of you are trying just a basic substitution? Anyone just using a basic substitution? Anyone trying integration by parts? Anyone trying trig substitution? What else? What are y'all trying? There's only like four people responded. So, what are y'all trying? Integration by parts. All right. So, I, I'm not sure which technique is going to work here. I'm just going to show you what what I would do. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I, I have a good feeling about it. Um, I'm going to let u be equal to the cube root of x minus four. I know that doesn't seem like a very natural thing to want to do. Because the du is ugly, isn't it? And right, the derivative of that's ugly, and I doubt it appears here. But I showed you this once. If I cube both sides, I get that, don't I? Yes? And now if I take the derivative on both sides, the derivative of the left side is 3u squared du. And the right side, the derivative is what? dx. So I will be able to replace, sorry, replace this with what? With u. And I will be able to replace dx with 3u squared du, right? The only thing really left for me to determine is what the x will become, which I can use this to say that u cubed plus 4 is x. Now, I believe integration by parts will also work for this, but it's a little, little uglier. So what would my new integral look like? I'd have x right here, which is u cubed plus 4 over what? Oh, this is just u times dx, which is 3u squared du. One of the u's cancels with one factor there. And then all I have is u cubed plus 4 times 3u du. And I can distribute the 3u through. And I get what? Integral. You want me to pull the 3 all the way out? OK, I'll pull the 3 all the way out. u to what power? 4th plus 4 times u, du. So that's just passing that u through. And now that's just power rule. So the antiderivative of this will be 3 fifths u to the fifth plus what? It's the antiderivative of 4u. 2u squared. 2u squared, but then times 3. So 6u squared plus a constant. But what's u? This cube root thing, right? So this would be 3 fifths cube root of x minus 4 to the fifth power plus 6 times the cube root of x minus 4 to the second power. 
I'm not saying that's the only way to do it, just that is a particular way to do it. That would be a candidate for an integral on a test. Something that's not as natural, not as fluid as the two prior to this, right? Where you have to kind of struggle with it a little bit, try something. All righty. So now let's go back and look at that inter integral that we had. And let's address some issues that we had with it. Uh, 3 to 5, x over cube root, x minus 4 dx. Do I have a problem at 5? If I plug 5 in here, is it OK? Yes? If I plug 3 in here, is it OK? It's a cube root. It's a cube root. You can take a cube root of a negative number. That's all right. So see, you don't have any problems at the endpoints, right? But you do have a problem where? At four. at 4. And 4 is in there, isn't it? This is a very dangerous integral because what happens is that people will overlook the fact that there is a discontinuity at 4. They'll, they'll get the antiderivative. They'll plug in the two endpoints, and they'll say, that they'll say they're done. What they lose with that is the fact that there's a discontinuity in there. So the graph is there. See it below the function? That's the graph. And you see we have the function becoming infinite there at 4? Yes? So I need to be very careful when I'm doing this problem to draw out my number line where I'm integrating, 3 to 5, circling where I have a discontinuity, and realizing that I'm going to have to approach 4 from what? Both sides. Guess what that means you're going to have to do? Two integrals. You have to split it up into two integrals. So this integral actually becomes the integral first from 3 to 4 of the function. And then plus the integral from 4 to 5 of the function. For, that's right. So on this one, you have to set up the limit, right? As t goes to what? 4 from which side? Negative. Left side, the, the negative. So that, this integral right here represents this region right here. Call that integral A. This is integral A. Integral B here is going to be this one right here. So. Integral A is limit as t approaches 4 from the left. This one is limit as t approaches 4 from the right. And then you have to go through the whole business of plugging things in and setting it up and figuring it out, right? We already have the antiderivative, though. So this is your take-home quiz to be turned in at the beginning of next class. Um, finish it off. I already got you the antiderivative, right? So you just finish it off, turn it in next class. We good? All right. Um, what are we doing next time we meet? Talking about the exam, right? We've pretty much covered the two types. I mean, I could do more and more examples. Well, there's only one more in my notes. So. I'll offer that one as a bonus. How about that? You like bonuses? Five? Five, yeah. Do it separately than this, though. So if you're going to do the bonus, do that on a separate piece of paper. I'm not saying it's bonus because it's harder. I'm just saying because I didn't do it in class, you go do it and show me you did it, and I'll give you a bonus. So next time, we will talk about the exam, right? Uh, maybe, I mean, time is not something we have a lot of in this class. We're supposed to talk about on the 13th. We're supposed to be doing improper integrals next class, but I'm saying we're done with improper integrals. So I would really like to try and spend um, Tuesday, you know, maybe I can come up with a set of problems and just come into class and like be like, here, why don't you all look at those and see what you think of that and make sure I tell you that's not a review for the test.
but it's just a practice, right? Hmm? It's a non-review review. Yes. Can you use, what is that? The trig sub. Why don't we do what we did last time? Didn't I offer bonus if you don't use anything? No, I didn't do it. I didn't in the class. Let's do it that way. You're allowed to have those formula sheets on your test, the ones that are on the website, the whatever, six, eight pages, whatever it is. Everybody gets that, right? If you take the test without any other additional resources, like the, what is that, partial fractions? Is that the partial fractions one or trig sub? Okay. If you do it without any of the trig sub formulas, then I'll give you an additional two or three points. Okay? Just a little two point for, but if you feel like you need it, you can use it. We'll talk more about that next class. Everyone have a good rest of your day and a good weekend if I don't see you. <clears throat> Remember that all of the solutions to the homework problems are online. So you should be able to do all the odds for this section. Bye. See you later. Well, it's 5 through 31 odds. 6 for page 360. Five through thirty-one odds. That's the that's the homework that would come out of the uh, improper integral section. I am yes. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't really care. I mean, it's it's really more of an exercise that will hopefully benefit you. I mean, I think we're all aware that the antiderivative part is the main part of it. Um, but if you want to practice just to get used to plugging numbers in and seeing how some things, sometimes you have to like combine natural logs together to get the match the back of the book sort of thing, it's good exercise. Yeah, th because uh, there was one that I did yesterday. Uh -huh. uh, it, was, it was like one you showed us last class where uh, it was an odd function. Okay. But I at least saw it. And